Greetings all of you. A warm welcome to all of you. And a warm invitation to come with me in another Lenten devotional. And I want to talk about Herod. This is your Pastor Yeti. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time, He had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He pleaded him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. And then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Interesting. Luke 23 the verses 6 to 12. In recent years, the most popular baby names for boys were Jackson, Aiden, and Lucas. You don't hear too many parents naming their newborn Herod. But in the Bible accounts, Jesus' time and in the events encompassing Jesus' life, the name Herod arises often. Did you realize how many Herods lived during this time? I think I need a clear pedigree chart to figure this confusing family tree. For example, Herod the Great is the father of the Herod who read about in today's Bible verses. Harold the Great is the king we hear about in the Christmas story, the one the Magi visit, the one who murdered all the babies. He is the patriarch of this family lineage. Then Herod Archelaus comes along, and when the angel in a dream tells Joseph to bring Mary and Jesus back home from Egypt, he is advised to go to Nazareth instead of Bethlehem because of the threats and wickedness of Herod Archelaus. Another Herod ruled the area north and east of Galilee too. Harold Agrippa II appears in the trial of Paul in the book of Acts. The Herod at the time of Jesus' trial is Herod Antipas. He is also the same man who killed John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. This Herod divorced his first wife, married Herodias, the wife of his brother, who was yet a different Herod. Crazy family name, right? And not A wonderful family to name a child after, would you say? Herod Antipas 
represented his family name well in his cruelty and mocking of Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus perform like a monkey in a circus. Show me a miracle, Jesus. Come on and do a trick to entertain me. Herod even dressed Jesus in an elegant robe, making fun of his kingship. Then Herod finished with this belittling of Jesus before sending him back to Pilate. Now, Pilate and Herod shared something in common and became friends. They mutually used their power and influence to their right, use and crush another to boast their own ego and self-interest. Family names not only carry our identity, but also a connection to others. Our actions say something about what type of person we are and reflect unto an entire family. In Herod's family, evil, scorn, and sarcasm dominated their behavior. As we hear the voices of this sadistic family, think about your family name and the message and legacy left with its memory. And I encourage you to do a very in-depth ancient history study. You will find out what kind of a person Herod really was with the first one who arises on the surface, if I may say so. It is really evil. And much more. I give you the image for today. It's in family three. And my question for you, when others hear your name, what do they think? And my prayer, Lord of all, you continue to teach us lessons even in the family trees of those who fail you. Help us to learn to be kind, generous, and loving to all we meet. Now, don't you think, my beloved people, that this is the golden rule? Because in all of that, as we move forward, The path is not paved on that. Because we know very much where we come, came from. And very much what our name is. And very much sometimes what the history of our families are. And this is not a judgmental fucking. This is a very interesting deep talking to take a few moments and to sit down and reflect on your name. But in all that, I believe for a hundred percent that on this earth life we have, what our name ever means or what it brought to us or what it scares to death to us or whatever it brought us, we can live to make a full difference in that. And if it is fine, if it's very lovely and it's very encouraging our families, then fine. But if we have to make choices, don't hesitate to take the choices because your life can be changed at 360 degrees. Because I know. This is your pastor Yeti. I love you guys.